Hello and welcome to Kuala Lumpur. I am in very busy Terminal 2. I checked in online already and luckily I am traveling without checked luggage today. So no need to queue to drop off the bag. As I am flying in AirAsia X today, AirAsia's long haul subsidiary in business class, I wanted to check out the premium red lounge. But it seems the lounge is still closed because of the recent pandemic. It's 2024 now, so to me it looks more like a money saving strategy than a safety measure, if I'm honest. Luckily, and only thanks to my priority pass, I have other options, such as this beautiful travel club lounge. By the way, according to Meta search engines for flights, I booked business class. However, AirAsia X promotes them as premium live flat seats without mentioning business class. So let's see today how exactly business class-ish my flight is going to be. Let's head to the gate to catch my ride to Hong Kong this morning. This is my Airbus A330-300 with the big fat axis on the engine and the tail. The crew is boarding and soon after it was my turn, being among the first to board thanks to the business, uh, I mean flatbed class. Don't you also love these glass jet bridges? The welcome was very friendly and I made my way to the front of the aircraft, passing the forward economy class section. And this is my seat for the next three and a half hours. This business class is in a 2-2-2 layout, with only two rows, right in front of the economy class, which is laid out in a 3-3-3 configuration. While not comparable to the latest business class hard products in the industry, the seats feel comfortable and well maintained. I just wish the headrest was slightly higher to accommodate my 1 m 93 or 6 foot 4. The welcome drink was comprised of this bottle of water. Hey, still better than no welcome drink at all. Pretty hilarious I find this tiny little privacy wall. I wonder if there is such thing as placebo privacy. Legroom is excellent and so is the stowage room for the bag. For some reason only every second seat has a pillow on it. A quick mandatory look at the A330-300 safety card. And if you wonder, no, I don't collect these. I'm happy with a picture of it. Guess what I found behind my seat. Look at these gaps. Did I miss something here? Why are there magazine pockets and this magazine gap? Or what else could that be? So many questions. There's more space, probably for the bottle or headphones. Here we have the reading lights, but unfortunately no individual air fans. The table is stowed in here. We'll take it out later when needed. The seat control I find here. Note the fairly elaborated footrest control, while everything else allows basic movement. And what is this for, please? Doesn't make sense to me right now. It must have been around 30 degrees centigrade on board by now. Hopefully the aircon will work soon. Between the seats I found the power outlets. They are free of charge to use. Of course, you might think. But watch my scoot video for a surprise. With the engine start also came some fresh, cool air, which was quite a relief.
I like how my Insta360 camera stays put while the whole aircraft turns around it. Bye bye Malaysia. I hope to be back soon again. Let's try out the launch position. The crew handed out this fluffy blanket, which I didn't expect on this budget business class. Lovely. Let's see what else we have in the pocket. Looks like it's a shopping magazine, merch and also food. And what a large selection. With my flatbed ticket I also got one complimentary dish and drink included, which is going to be this prawn and chicken wonton noodles. And AirAsia X has the probably most extensive drinks menu I have ever seen on a low cost carrier. And the offers go on and on. I see the food is heading my direction, so let's get the table ready, which doesn't necessarily seem an easy task. Exactly my choice, booked almost half a year ago, has been delivered as promised. And again, it looks exactly as in the picture. No misleading advertising. Well done, AirAsia. Again, you wonder? Check out this video of my previous AirAsia flight. And it tasted better than it looked. However, if you expected a business class style multi-course surfing, then the dining experience might disappoint you. It's basically the same as in economy class, with the only difference that it is already included in the fare. So how does a budget business class bathroom looks like? Let's find out. It's not huge, I would say normal for an Airbus A330 without any special perks, except the flower. Overall very clean and in perfect condition. No complaints from my side. We still have two hours to go and maybe I manage to get a little nap, since I paid for a flatbed seat. My new friend and subscriber from mainland China had the same idea. And while I'm in this perspective, let me also show you these reading lights. Conveniently there are also these additional seat control buttons, reachable from the live light position. I definitely wasn't tired enough for a nap. But I tried, so what else can we do? Maybe watch through the window the world go by? Another option to kill some time, since there is no in-flight entertainment, is walking the entire length of this Airbus A330-300 cabin. This version of the AirAsia X A330s has a 333 economy class layout, while other versions are in a 242 configuration. There is even a version with a premium economy class and a 121 business class. I would love to try out that one. I have a few more minutes left to catch up with my travel block before we start our descent towards Hong Kong. Time to get ready for arrival.
Welcome to the major construction site called Hong Kong International Airport. This is one of my favorite airports in terms of comfort, plane spotting and lounge hopping. You can leave me here for hours and I won't complain. So how would I rate my budget life flat seat business class? For the relatively small amount paid, roughly 220 US dollars, which included a quite comfortable seat, a basic meal and one drink, but no IFE, I felt it was quite a bargain. The crew was very friendly and welcoming, but since there was no free flow of drinks or additional snacks, there was no need for the crew to keep on checking on us, as you would expect for example on a full service business class. Overall, for this price, I wouldn't hesitate booking AirAsia X version of a business class again. I hope you enjoyed this flight review and maybe it helped you in the decision making whether you would want to spend the extra money for this premium booking class. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, bye for now.